last chapter, we talked about sound production. We talked about humans, how humans produce sound, and how animals produce sound. We also quickly talked about what sound actually is, right? that it's a wave which is created by vibrations of a source. And we, saw, we talked about the larynx being that source for humans, and the source with the wings for crickets. Right. So that's what we talked about in last chapter. But in this chapter, we're going to talk about sound receiving, right? Because if you can only produce sound, but you can't receive sound, then you can't communicate, right? Communication requires a signal, but also something to pick up the signal, so a receiver. The signal is, in our case, our voice, our message we can produce with our voice, and then our receiver would be, in our case, the ear, which when then receives that signal, it makes it into a message. So in this video, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to compare detection of vibrations by insects, fish, and mammals. So basically, we're going to talk about the receivers, how insects, fish, and mammals receive sound, as opposed to produce sound, which we talked about in the last chapter. All right, so first of all, I want to give again a shout out to th this book where I got some of these pictures from, Hahnemann Biology, because I couldn't find any good pictures for those um, topics we're going to discuss in this video. So the insects have two main mechanisms that they use to produce or to receive sound and it always requires hair so there's some hair sticking out when these hair vibrate you can imagine it's a hair cell and attached to this hair cell is a nerve which then gets sent to the brain for interpretation so whenever these hair cells vibrate going back and forth back and forth that's when this actual nerve will also be stimulated, will be activated, and this nerve will send a, send a message to the brain. <coughs> Sorry. All right, so that's basically, hairs are important for insects, fish, and mammals, but where these hair are and how they work could be a tiny bit different. All right, so first of all, antennas. Antennas are obviously, for example, on mosquitoes, these are the antennas, right? the things that stick out from the head. And you might be able to see it a tiny bit, but there's actually tiny microscopic hair, a very small hair, they're sticking out. And when these hair are activated by sound, right, when a sound wave comes, and you remember with sound waves, even though we represent them like this, they're more like these pockets, these compression pockets. You can imagine these compression pockets coming, so it's, it's just lots of air compressed together. They will hit the actual hair, and that will send a signal to the brain. So that's how an, a, a mosquito, for example, a mosquito picks up sound through its hair on its antenna, and then when the hair are activated, that signal gets sent to the brain, and then it can hear sound. Now, other animals, other insects are a bit different. They might use their antenna, but they also use something a bit more complicated, a bit more complex. And that's called the tympanic organ, right? So the tympanic organ. And a cricket would be one example that uses right? We talk about cricket, it can produce sound using its wings, and it can receive sound using the tympanic organ, and that's located here. So it's located just under the knee. The knee would be this part here. So we're inside the actual leg. So its its ear is almost inside its leg, which is quite crazy. Right, so that's the tympanic organ is right there. But if we look at the cross sectional, so that means we cut it like this. This is what, we, and then if we look at it from below. This is how it will look like if we cut it and then looked from it from the inside. Right. So basically, it has these tympanic membranes, it's called the tympanum, that's the membrane. And how it works is it's got these hair follicles as well, and like I'll, I'll show you where the hair follicles are, right there. That's the same hair fo follicle that when it moves, it creates a vibration. So when this actual, when air passes through, so air passes in here, it will go down to the tympanic organ. And then what it will do, this air will activate the membrane, so it will make the membrane move up and down. When the membrane moves up and down, it also shakes the hair cell, which is on top, because it's quite close by. And when the hair cell shakes, that's what triggers a impulse, and the impulse then gets sent to the brain, and we interpret sound, or not we, but the crickets. Um, so that would be the tympanic organ, and then that would be in quite a few insects, especially cricket or grasshopper-like insects. Now how fish receive sound, they can use either the ladder line or the swim bladder. I'm not going to cover the swim bladder in this video because I shouldn't make it too long, but it's basically like an internal ear that some fish, not all fish have, 
It's a bit different to our ear, but it is ear-like in terms of structure. Whereas the lateral, lateral line all fish have. So all fish basically have this line, whereas swim, swim bladder only some fish have. Now what is lateral line? It's just a line basically on both sides of the fish. It's on its, on its outside, on its fin, or close to its fin. And this line um, looks like this when you zoom in. It has these openings where air can pass or water can pass in. In case of fish, it's water. Water can pass in. Right? What you should know is that all of these tubes are actually filled with water. So it's not, there's not air in here, there's water in here. Even if there's no sound coming in, they're still full of water. Right? This whole thing's full of water. And also, you've got these same hair cells we talked about beforehand. These hair cells are here. Right? These are the hair cells. So when they get activated, they will send an impulse to the brain. And then we will interpret sound. But how do these actually get activated? So you can imagine these actual openings, these tubes here, are full of water. So what happens if a sound is produced? A sound will make a disturbance in the water. So it makes a small wave in the water. So this wave comes in and goes into the tube. And then it's going to be a wave coming all the way in. And then the wave hits the sensory cell, makes that hair move a bit more than it would usually move. So when the wave moves, moves the hair, the hair will be activated and then it will send a signal, right? So the waves that are created will actually make the signal happen. And the waves would move through. So if we have one fish here, another fish here, the waves ripple through the water and eventually end up at the latter line of the other fish. And then it will move in and activate the, the sensory hair cells and you have a stimul and you have a detection of sound. Now we also talk about mammals because it also says we need to talk about mammals. And there's land mammals and water mammals, and they're gonna have similar structures but slightly different. I'm not gonna talk about the land mammal example for too long because we're gonna cover it in much more detail in the next couple of videos, because the human ear, for example, is a mammal, uh, the land mammal's production. So it has an outer ear, it has a membrane, a tympanic membrane, that's the eardrum, and it has a cochlea, which is where the hair cells are. So in here, the inner ear is where the hair cells are. And basically what happens with a human ear, we're going to cover that much more in the next two videos, is you've got air coming in, it activates the membrane, the membrane drums, so it goes back and forth, and then that activates some small tiny bones, which will also move back and forth, and the movement back and forth will make the cochlea, the water in the cochlea move, and when the water in the cochlea moves, that moves the hair cells. So basically, the hair moving then means we've got an impulse being sent. So it's similar to... Um, all the other ones, but it's just in the ear structure as opposed to outside or in a tympanic organ. But the whale works slightly different. We have a ear, we have this part here, this is the outer ear. Whereas a whale, because in the water it doesn't have an outer ear, it's just got more or less the inner ear. But what happens is sound comes in, actually hits the jaw. So, and when the jaw hits, when the jaws hit, that makes these tiny bones, which we also have, vibrate. And these tiny bones then vibrate the cochlea, which will then um, cause the sensation. Right? So with the difference between a land and a water mammal, it's just because just the outer ear is a bit different, but the rest is still quite similar. Uh, so now in terms of the actual dot point, I'll outline and compare the detection of vibrations by insects, fish, and mammals. I'm just going to have a, a, a quick a quick um, graph, a, not a quick table in terms of showing the difference or how they're similar. First of all, do they have ear structures? Insects do not have an ear structure. Mammals do have some some kind of ear structure. Fish, if they have the lateral line only, then they don't have. So lateral line only is don't have, but some of them will have some type of ear structure, which would be the um, swim bladder. So the, some fish that have swim bladder do have some kind of ear structure. But you can see there's a very difference between if they have an ear structure or not. Membranes, we have said that we said had we said that grasshoppers or crickets, for example, they will have a membrane. It would be the tympanic membrane, or sorry, the, the tympanium part. But a mosquito would not have, right? So in this case, insects, some do, some do not, depending on how they interpret sound. Fish generally do not have, unless they have a swim bladder that might have a membrane. But mammals do have a membrane, so they have the type the tympanic membrane. Um, receptor hair, all of them have receptor hair, right? So these hair are in all of them. Location. Um, for the mosquito, it would be the antenna. For the um, cricket, it would be the tympanic organ, which would be located close to the knee. In fish, it's the lateral line, so it's the outside of the fish. That's the lateral line. 
and both the both the land and water mammals will be the skull. Uh, so these are some difference or similarities between the different structures, but that's what we have to do. So that's what I just did. I compared and first I outlined the structures and then compared the structures. So be ready to be able to compare and outline the structures of these of different animals and humans as well, but humans will cover more in the next video.